Alright, wait, making a video. Um, anyway, yeah, I have done some changes to the um, page that shows all the videos and so now it shows them in wide full screen kind of idea. Uh, depending on your browser resolution, it should adjust and whatnot and so forth. And so the page automatically refreshes every whatever 10 or 15 minutes. So you could just leave it running in the background and just look at it every now and then and see if there's any new videos up here in this ordery thing here. And so it's pretty, um, you know, it's a subscription. It's a public subscription. I just put a list of people in here. And if so if somebody has some suggestions for people that are missing that might be a good idea, um, I'm open to those suggestions. And I'll link below or such or whatnot. People who make videos about relevant stuff and so forth. Um, anyway, Broken Mac made a, another stupid video, yeah, that's the only kind he makes. It wasn't as stupid as his usual video, I mean, it wasn't full of lies, but it was still full of nonsense. So, we'll start halfway or so and see where we go here. Great. Towards this singularity of, we're going to make some kind of massive technological leap. Um, that, that's going to change everything. Everything? I mean, come on. What what, what dynamic is there really? I, I don't you know. I don't know what you live for. I guess I just don't get it. Okay, that's why we probably disagree. Is I just don't get it. I don't get what the complexity is. The thing you're living for, that everything is going to change. Um, and, and what is it? it? It's just a stupid desire mechanism. I mean, all I live for are really stupid satisfactions of stupid desires period there's there's no grander personal like deep down like um, visceral um, uh, horniness for any of this the rest of it is just work the rest of it is just fixing all the thunks junk that's broken so if you if we ever got to a singularity um, what am I going to be preoccupied with what am I going to pro I like programming so what am I just going to program in the singularity um, and then we're back to the old virtual reality thing, which you, you know, in typical, um, um, whatever that is, bait and switch or fraudulent manner, you know, you use an argument, you despise a, a premise that you argue against in your next argument about something else, because it's to your convenience now to argue as if, yes, this is now possible. Um, and forget it. And, and, you're, and you're not, you know, all of this, this this voodoo promises haven't they been made forever I mean now you're just you know, you accuse other people of religiosity aren't you just resorting to the same bullshit we're right on the cusp we're right on the verge Jesus is going to be here in just a few days yeah we're gonna have this magical technical fix well we've had technical fixes in the past we've done things penicillin whatever and yes it made things better but it really didn't fix the underlying problem and now this whole technical thing is kind of dangerous. We've only had, you know, genetically mutated crops for a couple of decades. We've only had nuclear bombs for, you know, under a hundred years still. Uh, so this is not a safe bet. What, what do you think we're going to do with this new technology? What do you think people are going to do with it who have malicious little wheels turning? Idiot. And there's very good reasons to to say why that could uh, almost reduce suffering entire, or uh, eliminate suffering, at least for human beings. Yeah, except for the Jew-killing nanobots, right? <laughs> yeah, except for, you know, just think what this technology can go. It can go in incredibly malicious directions. I mean, you could create nanotechnology that only attacks certain genetic humans. You could do it. That's a theoretical possibility. So you want to unleash that on the, you know, something that you could just buy a kit at the store and, uh, you know, you mix a few ingredients and a little hair shampoo and bingo, you've got yourself a little uh, nanobot that'll take out your neighbor and his whole tribe. Yeah. Good luck with that. You know, I mean, if we can even conceive of a world where we don't suffer, uh, it's possible. Of course, it's possible that it's a... Yeah, well, these arguments have been made before um, that maybe, unfortunately, 
uh, the extent of your pain is what you build your satisfaction out of and so you sort of have to have at least the memory of suffering to have appreciation I mean that's why the rich and famous tend to get very eccentric and bizarre is because they lose sight of pain and suffering and so now they have to keep going higher and higher and higher and higher bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and they can't be satiated they can't be satisfied um, so that this is a double-edged sword again and again why do we even want to pull the sword you're just missing the whole point because of your 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 DNA delusion um, it's a replicating molecule and you haven't demonstrated this you're not going to make an argument here why we need to do anything why we should accept any downside risk because there is absolutely nothing to be accomplished here but to satisfy your delusional perceptions of accomplishment there are no real mountains to climb all of them are made of bullshit absolute motherfucking bullshit and you're being duped and you're attempting to dupe other people by scaring them that the the evil intention of the antinatalist is coming to get them no the antinatalist is simply pleading with people to quit wasting squandering puking on suffering have some respect for it concede this game is idiotic and let it the fuck go that's all you have to do you just let it go you just drop it and you just say okay I'll live my life but I won't fuck with this thing this is dangerous, this sentience thing. It's nothing to be fucked with, idiots. Uh, you know, a dystopian future and that super intelligent machines decide that we're a problem and kill us all. But antinatalist stuff. Well, you just brought up this whole super intelligent thing, these super, you know, you will bring up, and how these supercomputers are going to run the world and do all this crap and blah, 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 blah. And know what the first conclusion any kind of super intelligence is going to draw? It's going to say, well, what's the, what's the uh, game plan here? What are you attempting to accomplish? Uh, no can compute is what it's going to say. Until you give me some reason why I can't even, what am I going to calculate? How stupid this whole thing is? Why are you wasting my, uh, you know, quantum electronics here? My quantum memory or whatever the fuck you've got my supercomputer running on? Uh... <laughs> you know, what's the agenda? And it's not going to be able to find one. And it's going to say you fail. That's going to be the in super intelligent. The more intelligent you get, the more you, you are going to see the obviousness of the fact that we are just chasing fake cheese. There's nothing real to accomplish here but cleaning up the mess we make by attempting to accomplish something. They shouldn't, <laughs> that shouldn't be even a factor for them. Uh, they should be embracing that as a possibility. Sort of a win-win situation for them. Yeah, again, so you just, you, you just scuff off and you just laugh about it because you just don't give a fuck. And you'll keep claiming you somehow care in some way, but you don't. And this kind of conversation makes it so obvious. You don't care about the squandered, wasted suffering. That's why you can abuse the images from the Holocaust. That's why you can play this game with all this stuff. It's because you don't give a fuck. If you actually sat down and thought about what it would be like to walk around with a knife up your ass for a hundred years and think about what's gone on in human psychology, think about the horrors and the torments that people have endured on this fucking planet, in insane asylums, in wars, in trenches, in hospital beds. If you gave it just a little bit of serious thought, you wouldn't be able to make these little fluffy comments like it's a big joke if the human race gets into some kind of idiotic, insane world war, all right, and they're all living like rats in fucking mud and shit. And like that's some kind of glory for our side. No, that's fail, asshole. You just don't fucking get it. Anti-natalists. And, uh, you know, there, there's, there's, um, I'm really trying not to get into the arguments against anti-natalism here. Just, just, yeah, because you don't have any of those. The arguments for procreation, which would be that basically here we have for however long we've been around, billions of years of life on the planet and hundreds of millions of years of sentient life, 
or billions of years of sentient life. I don't even know how long sentience has been around. But all of Yeah, well, 500 years, 500 million is close enough, I think. I, I think trilobite, you know, was 500 million, million years ago. So everything after that seems pretty this brainy. All of this suffering that we have endured as DNA sentient organisms evolving and and consuming and reproducing and all of the just the shit that we've gone through to get to here yeah again to get to here like this is some sort of glory moment right where there's mass murders taking place with machetes and, and you know this is you know this 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 fantasy like I said that you just think that there's something we're gonna do that there's something for us to do but but act out silly little plays of 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 gluttony and desire. There isn't anything else, moron, except to fix things that are we break. All there is is janitorial duties here, all right, or else creating the mess that the janitor has to clean up. To the brink of something truly truly amazing. Uh, yeah, well, we hear this word, amazing. We hear words like beauty and amazing, and I'm not falling for it. I don't see it, okay? It sounds like pearly gate bullshit to me. You can't even describe this amazing in any kind of real way. Unprecedented, like anything in the history of this planet. Oh, and yeah, well, I don't think it's going to do better than, like, Rome in its heyday or something, right? <laughs> you know, I don't know. The debauchery. I think I'm sure there's been moments in human history where the, the gluttons and the pigs have, have, have lived um, lavish lifestyles. It's, it's literally within our grasp. It's, it, it, it's going to happen within our lifetime. There is, and this is not just a fantastic sort of, oh, I wish it would happen. No, every indicator points to this happening. Yeah, we're going to what, invent water beds? Oh, we already did that. Um, yeah. uh, nothing's coming to mind. Uh, sooner than we think. No, oh, sooner than we think. I mean, we can't say exactly when, but it, it's happening faster and faster. Yeah, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Yet yeah, we we're drone warfare. I mean, what where are you going with this? Again, this is this is just talk about some sort of like we're going to be able to get our synthetic cheese and shove it right up our nose with, you know, nanobots or put it up our nose for us. We won't even have to extend the effort. We'll have computers. Yeah, we have them now. Like, you won't even have to do the mouse thing. You just do the little touchy thing. And then there'll be a point where we just blow on it or we spit at the computer and it'll do what we want. Oh, great. You know, we saved 4.3 megaseconds. Mmm. And faster and, and most people in the, in, in the high tech, in the, in the cutting edge of these fields, they all agree that this is, you know, that these things are just around the corner. Just around the corner, right? Halon Collider, super mega, super super. <laughs> yeah. So he's got some things mentioned here. I guess I'll have to go check out these silly links and make fun of them later. Um, but whatever. Transform us. We're going to be transformed by technology and trans brain secrets. Ooh, brain secrets. I mean, it's genomic revolution. Yeah, that's always a good idea when people are talking about the genomic revolution. Yeah, that's not a dangerous concept. So, again, conservatively saying this is going to happen within our lifetimes, um, and then you look on the, the, the entire history of life on this planet, and antinatalists want to say, let's fold our hand, let's, let's call it quits, when... Yeah, well, they're just doing what the humankind would have done, could have done, maybe should have done, if it had the power to do it centuries or millennia ago. But they didn't have any con any conception of an ability to control the process, and they didn't know what the process was. We know what it is now, okay? There's no Zeus, there's no Jehovah, there's nothing. There's a DNA molecule, a piece of chemistry, that's replicating. All right, and it's overflowed its little beaker, and it's spreading across the, the planet, and it's 
consuming itself. It's fighting with itself. It's it's cutting its own nuts off. I mean, this is a stupid, sick, idiotic pageant. Yeah, it's a very bad play, and you shouldn't just perpetuate it because you like the name of it. And that's all you're doing here. You're just making the argument from I'm I I'm I, I I'm too familiar. It's too too big a friend of mine. I can't. I can't, uh, I can't be honest, I can't be fair to the question. Well, then you should shut the fuck up. I mean, if, if, you, can't, if you can't be serious and make a serious argument about why life is seriously accomplishing something, then, then fuck this shit. This is just, but this is this hope crap that everything's going to be unicorns and cotton candy is just such a pile of shit. We've seen human beings and how they behave. And we see them right now. The political system is shit. The economic system is shit. The whole thing is heading for shit. The whole corpocracy, where has that gotten us? I mean, you fucking are ignoring the reality. All the, the signs are all pointing to danger, dead end. You're fucked. And you're just going to pretend we should all, let's just ignore all that. Um, because we're right on the brink of something brilliant. You're on the brink of catastrophe. This is right around the corner. Why would you not hang on, at least to the, to the, you know, to the... Well, this is almost a mute, moot point, right? I mean, it's going to take at least a generation or two to do this anti-natalism thing anyway. So it's not like you could do it tomorrow or three months from now. It's going to take a little time to get this gear work moving. Uh, so you got some lead to time to pr demonstrate your bright and beautiful future shit. Um, and I don't think you're going to do it. And on the course getting there, the whole idea of reducing population and, and uh, you know, fixing the environment in terms of, you know, getting rid of the excessive and unnecessary suffering wouldn't hurt. Um, and then maybe at the end you can sit there and make your last stand for your... Well, I see a singularity out there, and maybe you'll have a maybe in a hundred years you'll actually have an explanation for what the fuck your singularity is. Get to the singularity or don't. Uh, but you you know there's it just seems absurd. It's like going on a on a three day long car ride, and then you're just about there. You're just pulling into the driveway. You're just about to get there, and then you're like, ah, fuck it. Yeah, our other analogies might be it's, uh, you know, the little warning light is flashing on the nuclear power plant and you're saying, well, we still need the power, so let's let it run a little while longer. Let's let it run a little while longer and, you know, we'll, we have time and we'll riggedy jiggity and everything will be just fine. <clears throat> so don't ignore the warning signs. Keep playing the game until you're really foobar. Fuck it. Let's not go. I mean, we're, we're like, it just doesn't make any sense. It makes a ton of sense. You're not going anywhere. So again, this is a, a false premise from my perspective, okay? I mean, obviously, if I thought there was something that would justify the suffering, justify the squandering of more of it, the, the, the risking of another dime's worth, I'd say fine, but this is a black hole idea. This is like investing in, I don't know, what? <laughs> Some kind of, think of something totally preposterous. I mean, you know, making houses out of snow in Florida. Why, why would I invest in a company that makes houses out of snow in Florida? It just doesn't make any sense. It's stupid. That you would give up at this point and say there's no, you know, even if, even if there is a, a huge potential of, of suffering in the future, in the near future, in our lifetimes, in the same time frame that I'm talking about, even if there's a huge potential of, of massively increasing our suffering. <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm sorry, you're going to try to say that something we're going to accomplish afterwards would be worth it. And again, you just don't get how this life thing works. You're born crying wanting, needing. That's all you're doing. You're just chasing your wants and needs. You're not chasing something extra. There is no extra. There is no do something better. Alright? There's just fixing the problem you create by existing. 
That's why the fucking thing is fail. There's nothing else to do here but satisfy needs we create. So again, I ask the question, what is the need to create the need? All right, that's the question you're not answering. Saying singularity doesn't explain how you're satisfying a need. How does the universe need us to singularity? How, how does any, anything demand it, get done, get accomplished, this singularity, this fucking bullshit word made out of nothing? That is entirely worth the risk when you say, when you consider the expenditure that we've already made. We've already invested so much suffering into getting here. Again, you think we're on the brink of something, and the, the brinks we're on the brink of are all kind of negative. We haven't solved the big issues, the big problems. We're still attempting to use violence to solve problems, give us more technology, and we'll just be more um, insidious in the use of that violence. So this isn't going anywhere. I'm sorry. That it is absolutely worth the risk to keep going for another hundred years. I mean, that's nothing, right? It's a, it's a drop. Well, again, a hundred years seems pretty much inevitable. Even if we get everybody on board tomorrow, it's going to take a hundred years to wind the thing down. Drop in the suffer the bucket of suffering for this potential payoff, this, this absolutely inconceivably amazing payoff. Yeah, inconceivably amazing payoff. Again, this is just just nothing. Rubies and emeralds in the streets covered in gold. Fantasy bullshit. It's just nothing. You're not explaining the grandeur of the fantasy. That, you know, could have these solutions to these problems. I mean, it could be the solution to in Mantan's virtual reality. Oh, again, see? Yeah, you're going to use virtual reality when it's to your benefit, but you're against it in principle. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, whatever. Silly person. Ish, you know, uh, solution. It, it could be there. It could be. It's not... Right, it still doesn't explain any need to do the needling thing. My virtual reality scenario is a solution for the human consciousness dilemma of finding a, a fail-safe environment for humans to exist in. But there would be no need to create more human beings. All right, so again, it has nothing to do with this perpetuation thing. It has to do with the consciousnesses that exist are the ones near to exist and creating an environment for them to exist in that would be essentially the singularity and then when that runs out it just runs out uh, it's not a fantasy you know I mean it is a fantasy right now I'm just saying it there's it, it could be something that exists it's absolutely within the potential I mean if you develop superhuman uh, super intelligent. Yeah. Why well, superhuman, super intelligent, super, super, amazing, amazing. Come on. Intelligent machines with godlike ability to, to, to know and build things from the atomic. Yeah, yeah, right. And they won't be able to figure out, well, you know what, Mr. Human? It's a replicating DNA molecule. All that you're doing is satisfy a need that's been created as a perception inside your brain. And uh, that's the whole game. You're just fighting with your own brain. Um, you're not accomplishing anything. You're essentially chasing your own tail. Okay, and you're getting off on it a little bit, but you're getting off on it at a huge price. And you really can't get rid of the price because then you're going to lose the motivation to chase the tail. Level and reprogram themselves and infinitely improve themselves. I mean, who knows what that could mean for us. We would just sort of be along for the ride at that point. So... Yeah. Well, like I said, there's so many catches to this whole thing. I mean, once you've singularity, where do you go from then? You know, do you do the singularity on ecstasy? <laughs> you know, and then you do the singularity on double ecstasy and being a little bit drunk uh, and a little cocaine at just the right minute. 
I mean, you know, I've heard people that have this thing, you know, like sex, they got to do it this way and that way, and it's got to go in the butt, and then this has got to go over there, and it, I mean, it's really, really gotten complicated for some people. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the liability here. So you just, you're just talking shit. That's all this is. This is just, um, this is just rationalizations made up to excuse perpetuating something that has no justification and the reason why is because you've done it you've you've committed the act of appropriating and so you're going to defend it and rationalize it um, instead of just admit that it wasn't a very thoughtful act okay uh, I think that's more than enough well we must go to the end I just you know I guess that would be my there's my gambling uh, analogy Here's my response to the gambling. Wow, what a great response to the gambling analogy. So you really didn't explain how you have the right to impose on somebody else, how you have a right to gamble with somebody else's house to buy your vision of a singularity, okay? That you can take the risk of burning their house down or taking their house away from them because you have some perception that you're getting to a singularity. So you still haven't, you haven't defended any of that and your idea that you're going to eliminate um, suffering, I think, is just bullshit. I, I really think it's bullshit. I just don't think you're going to be able to pull it off. An analogy used by the antinatalists all the time, which would be that at this point, uh, it would be crazy to fold, you know? Anyway. No, it's crazy to keep making excuses to do what a DNA molecule has been designed to do. Why should we facilitate? Why should we red carpet? Why should we sweep the pathway in front of a DNA molecule? I mean, it's just stupid. Why should we, we be living its agenda? Huh? Yeah, just grow up and let it go. We've done the consciousness thing. We've contemplated every hair on every nutsack in one way or another. We've done it. It just doesn't need to be done over and 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 over again.